on the bottom of the loop. Okay, it's on the inside keel of the uh, hook. A crimp and a piece of wire, like 180 pound test wire. It says on the website what size pound test wire it is. It's just basically a piece of shark wire, guys. There's nothing, uh, nothing fancy behind it. Um, basically, what we do is when we rig, we go through the crimp, through the egg sinker, through the hook, and then back through the crimp. And just before we crimp, we slide a little piece of wire in there. And uh, after we crimp it down, we basically just fold the wire up so you can see that the wire is in line. Um, it's basically 90 degrees from the back shank of the hook. All right. As I said, these rigs, guys, five or six fish in their shot. Throw them out because basically, you know, all you're throwing away is a little piece of wire and a crimp. You're saving the egg sinker and the hook and uh, whatever uh, head or lure, or if you're running them bare, um, you know, basically you can salvage everything. You're just basically using a new piece of line and a crimp. All right. Um, keep it as, sim as simple as possible. One thing that we do do, um, make it even faster, is we're going to show you we use rubber bands. A lot of times we'll put the rubber band. Um, over the pin and just loop it through itself. So when you do go to rig, the uh, rubber band is on. I'll get it through here. He just put it through itself there. Yeah, just yeah, loop it right through itself and just tugging it through. Right through itself on the pin. Yeah. The, the other the other thing is is I mean you know usually we're using rubber bands bigger than this usually like size twenty I think it is, and you put it right on your wrist and like on a boat we're always using rubber bands because, uh, you know tie yes. up a lure 20 feet because that's most suspect to get nicked or whatever. And if I feel something not right, I'm going to stop myself, you know. Um, so, again, after about two or three fights, you know, you're going to you're gonna want to make sure you check that. Uh, the other end, you're going to use an offshore loop, very simple, um, you know, with a crimp. Uh, or you could do shape guard. It depends on what you want to do. Uh, they don't really last long enough to warrant shape guard. That. You, know, you can reuse it. Your toast. Go ahead. Do you have a number on that hook you use? It's, a, it's in the article. It's yeah, a, well, it it's a mustad. Uh, on the website, all the articles are there. So like for the details for this, you know, you want to know the rubber band size is in there. Everything, the crimp size, you know. We're using 150 to 200 pound moi moi. Uh, the crimps, you know, uh, you know, the, the shark wire. Uh, basically make sure the shark wire is on the tag end, what I call the tag end of the line on top. So it's going to come up. And then again, uh, the length. Again, for most of your lures and your other lures, you want to just imitate what you're doing with the other lures. If you're fishing small boats, you only have two or three guys fishing with you, you know, where one guy's got a leader and gaff to fish, you want to go with a smaller leader, about eight foot. So that way the guy comes in, he's got a gaff in his right hand, comes in, grabs, grabs a wrap, comes over the top, and hits it. You know, a big boat, you're fishing with five, six guys all the time. You know, you go back to your normal 10, 12 foot leaders, and you know that way, one guy wires, one guy gaffs, and you're you know you're a little bit uh, easier to do. You're gonna go to the canyon or offshore, you know. I'm talking about no. over a thousand. I mean, like the days of me, you know, spending a dollar on it on a gallon of diesel fuel is way over. So I mean, uh, you know, like uh, the first trip uh, on, on our when we bought a new boat in 1994, spent five hundred dollars to go to the canyon, you know, plus food. You know, it was great. It was, you know, that was cats me out, three big eyes. Hey, great, can we get the next three trips paid for? Yeah, great, you know. Um, those days are over. So we're spending all this money, you know, I mean, the tackle, you know, the bars, everything. It's an expensive sport. What we're doing here is not a cheap thing. So And you want good bait. Yeah. That's basically what it comes down to. Don't chintz on bait. Don't 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 cheat don't cut yourself short. Just the same way that, you know, if you're gonna spend a thousand dollars to go to the canyon. Get the weather service for fifty bucks, sixty, but whatever, whatever it's yeah. going to cost you. Buy a case of value for two hundred bucks. Yeah. Put it in the freezer. Get the case of value. You can probably get it for under, about one hundred seventy-five dollars right now, but you want to get the right stuff. And what you want to do is wherever you're ordering it from, whether you're getting it from Baitmasters, Bionic, uh, your local supplier, a lot of the good guys out here on Long Island. You know, uh, if you're in the middle of the island, Trophy Tackle, John does a great job. You know, you can he'll, he'll help you with this. If you're out east, I'm sure Star Island can help you, or Whitewater and in, in, um, Hampton Bays. They, they're right off the, the canal there. They're great. Uh, to the west, uh, Mark and Bay Park, Richie's at Woodcliffe. Um, you know, so those are the guys that, you know, where most of the guys gravitate to, and that's where you're going to be able to find the good bait. You want to get the greenies. The good baits are caught now. Go ahead. Where do you guys get it in New Jersey? Uh, Fishman Supply, uh, Real Seat, um, and make sure to get your best possible baits. Um, the vacuum bagging. You want to make sure 
that the baits are tight in the pack. The, the plastic is actually contoured to the bodies. There's no frost burn. They're not loose. Um, you want to know that these baits were preserved for. If you pick up a pack in the freezer and they're all loose and you see a lot of frost around them and the eyes are milky, that means that the fish have, or the value has been defrosted and refro uh, refrozen and more than likely we all know what happens with bait that was defrosted and you refreeze it. When you unfreeze it again it's just mush. Um, there's just nothing left there, especially with butterfish if you try to salvage it flat uh, when you're chunking this stuff. Um, you know, so if you don't have the space for it, the, the, the next best thing to do is when you do look at the baits, you just got to kind of make sure um, that you're getting baits that were at least cared for. Um, you know, say, say you run out of baits, say you got to go get bait in the middle of June or something or July. Um, those are the things, couple things you want to look for when you pick them up at the tackle shop. Life out of them. This dump salt all over. You, you don't have to worry about using it too much. You know, bionic brine, salt, whatever you have. If you want to throw some baking soda, you can throw some baking soda on it if it makes you feel better. Um, but what this does is, the salt is going to toughen up the stomachs even more because the stomach is the most susceptible spot to blowing out when you're rigging the baits. Um, once we got them to frost and, and we're going, um, as I said before, uh, if you're using a center console, there's something you can do the night before. We've defrosted baits and had them upside down in the tray for a week. And as long as you got them salted and they're over ice and not on top of the ice themselves, the baits will hold for, you know, we've had them for a week. No you want problem. Them not on top of the ice. Yeah, you want them. You need a buffer. layer, a buffer between the ice and the baits. You want whether it's a cardboard box, you know, a stainless oh, okay. bait tray. Um, you just don't want the bait plastic laying right on top of the ice themselves. Plastic or, or you know metal tray is preferable like an ice because you know ice is fresh water and you know what happens. Is, but even if you'll just lay them on the ice, it would the ice will get soft. They're, they're gonna they're gonna you know hurt the body. They're gonna bruise the body and then you, they're gonna deteriorate quicker. So you want some kind of buffer on there. Um, again, same reason why we don't use fresh water because fresh water will just water them out. Salt helps keep salt helps keep it colder and it helps keep it tighter. Baking soda they use a lot of time because it brings out the color in the body. But when you get good greenies, I don't think baking soda is needed. It can't hurt, but it's not needed. All right. Any questions so far, guys? All right. Once we get to this point, we got our base defrosted and are covered in salt. What we're going to do is we're going to depoop them. We're going to run our thumb right down from the head, right down to the back cavity. And you're basically going to push out all that grass that they were eating in Florida before somebody netted them. Yeah, that's nice. Look at that. Nice and green. Yeah, there we go. All right, once we got them depooped, one thing we'll do is we'll just slide them like a snake just to loosen their bodies a little bit. Make sure their back is flowing. Make it easy for rigging. If you get one, you go to bend them. And he bends on one side and bends on this side, doesn't bend in the middle, he's not defrosted. You gotta give him a little while longer. What happens is when we try to rig him this way, you'll actually blow the hook out through the meat, because the meat's still frozen, it'll push right through the skin. Alright, once we got our bait defrosted and flexible, we're gonna take our rig, and we're gonna hang the pin where both his mouths are. Alright, because we want that pin to go through his lower jaw, up through his upper jaw. I'm going to measure where the hook should come out on the bottom. Leave your thumb there. Take the pin or the hook and just put a little guide hole there. Right where you want that hook to come out. Right? Make sure you put that guide hole smack in the middle of the body. Just like we kept the pin centered on the rig. Same thing on the bait. Alright, once we got our hard mark hole, depending if you're left handed or right handed. I'm, I'm right left handed, handed. Chris is right handed, so <laughs> whichever hand you prefer, so look at look at that long direction, alright? <laughs> Gonna put the pin We're going to spread his gills apart a little bit. All right, you can stick your thumb in there, just kind of hold it gently. Then we're going to insert the hook basically right, right down towards the stomach cavity. Put the barb of the hook underneath the gills right up against the, bottom, the belly. And if you're first starting off, what we're going to do is basically we're going to roll this ballyhoo right around the hook to this point and push the hook out. So if you're first starting off and you're, you're getting used to it still, you can actually roll the bait around on its side because he spins around a little easier. All right. Once you get used to it, you should put his in, your index finger on his head, and we're going to push up. And we're going to roll the bait right around and bring don't, the hook out where we need to come out. Don't be afraid to, to work your bait. Don't be afraid to bend the bait. They will. They'll go with it. Um, the biggest thing you don't want to do is put 